If you're anything like me, you spend a lot of time within NA10 building out automations for your business or for other people's businesses. But what if we could create a system where AI could generate these automations itself within seconds? Well, that's exactly what I've done. I'm going to show you this video how we can use Claude projects to type in a prompt and say what sort of automation we want to create within NA10. And then within seconds, Claude gives us that code, which we can copy, paste, put it into NA10 and have those automations running in seconds. I'm also going to give you absolutely everything you need to be able to set this up for yourself so you can dramatically increase the speed at which you create AI automations within NA10. So let's jump straight into it, see it in action and then look at how it works. Okay, so here we are within Claude and we're going to go over to Claude project. Claude Projects is needed for this. Um, I've tried to use it with the NA10 version of projects and it just doesn't work anywhere near as well. So I've created this project here. Uh, I'm going to go over how this is set up in just a while, but let's see it in action first. So the first thing I'm going to ask for is uh, create an agent that I can speak to via Telegram that can completely manage my Google Calendar. So we're going to click go, send this off to Claude, and we're going to see what Claude responds with. It's going to take a couple of seconds for it to generate the JSON, but uh, it's going to come back and give us all of that JSON, which we can copy and paste directly into NA10. Okay, it's taking about 10 seconds or so, but here you can see it's given us all of this JSON. So we're going to copy this, come over to NA10, we've got a blank workflow. I'm going to paste it in, and here we go. It looks like a bit of a mess, but if we tidy this up, here we can see we're going to have to move out away some of these notes, but um, let's put those just over like this. Okay, so we're going to have to tidy up a few things. It does about 95% of the work. We're going to have to do a few little bits on the end. So we are going to uh, select the correct Telegram account that we want to interact with. So that's pretty simple. Um, that's the one I want to interact with. Then the OpenAI one, that should resolve itself. Uh, there we go, that's fine. And then for all of these, um, all we need to do is go in and we need to select the correct uh, uh, Google Calendar that we want to interact with. Claude doesn't know any of our information, so we need to go in and select which calendar we want to interact with. So let's go through and do that for all of these. There we go, that is done. So all I need to do is save this. So now we're in Telegram and I'm gonna give it a test by saying, what is on my calendar for today? I only have one thing within my calendar today, I think. Let's go for a motorbike ride with my friend, Adam. So let's see what it says. There we go. You have one event scheduled for today. Ride with Adam at 11 a.m. Perfect. So there you can see with very, very minimal changes, we can actually get this thing to work very, very quickly. We don't have to build anything. We just have to make a few tweaks. And now this automation is running almost entirely generated by Claude. So let's have a look at how this is actually working. The principle is very, very simple. Essentially, all NA10 automations can be described with JSON. That is how you can download a NA10 automation. That is how you can use other people's NA10 automations. Like if you come across to the community, which is where I'm gonna share uh, all of these files. If I come over here to have a look at the project, all of these files which make this work, I'm gonna share over in my free community. You can come here, um, have a look, download this file, make it work for yourself. You can ask any questions as well if you want. But all automations within NA10 can be described with JSON. Now what uh, we're doing is getting Claude to create this JSON itself, which we then just copy and paste into NA10 and pasting that JSON into NA10 puts the workflow in there. If we have a look at the JSON that was generated, we can see it's describing uh, nodes and uh, parameters for certain nodes. Here's the telegram trigger. Um, let's have a look at what else we've got. We've got updating an event uh, within Google. So you can see it's creating all of this for us. Now, the real trick to get this to work is we've got to give it enough context because we've got to tell Claude and we've got to tell this project um, all about how JSON should be formatted in a way that we can copy and paste it into NA10. Because if you take any JSON and paste that into NA10, it is not going to work. It's got to be very specific and very precise in order to make that automation actually work. So we have got four pillars here in the project knowledge. The reason that we have to use projects for this is that we have to pass in a whole lot of context every time we speak with this project in order to get that JSON back. There are four kind of like pillars to this. The first one is the prompt. I'll show that in just a second. We've then got two of these uh, kind of like explainer documents. And then the, the fourth pillar is all of these examples which I've put in here. And as you can see, I've only used up 62%. So to make it even more accurate, I could fill this up. And uh, again, that would make it much more accurate. So let's have a look at that first pillar, which is the prompt. So the text prompt that's being passed into how this uh, project should work. So what I've said here is, I need you to generate a complete and operational NA10 workflow in JSON. 
And through an iterative process, I've worked out what needs to be in here in order to get a good result. And as you can see, I'm saying reference all of the materials provided, so all of these here, including the best practices and the nodes overview, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, a few things such as best practices, such as uh, node configurations, data connections, handling of memory, I've told it the rough structure it should follow. So usually you should start with a chat trigger. However, in our example, uh, Telegram was an override for that. Uh, you can see also I've put in node configuration. So how uh, some open AI nodes should work. And also I've explained about API keys. And if I'm using any tools that require API keys, then just say API key here and I'll fill it in myself. I'm not gonna go through all of this. However, as I said, I'm gonna put it in the community. You can come and have a look at it and go through it yourself. So that is pillar number one. But the second pillar is the best practices file. This is a text file, they're all text files, going over some of the best practices when creating these automations within NA10 and creating the JSON for those. So I've gone through uh, the general structure, what it should be like. I've gone through things such as chat triggers, gone through things such as sticky notes, AI agent modules. Um, I've given some examples of how that works. I've gone through Pinecone and how to make Pinecone work, Airtable, Google Docs. So we're giving it a load of information about the best practices to use within NA10 because the key thing here, as I said before, is got to produce precise JSON, which works every time. Then I've given it nodes overview. So if I open this up, you can see here, I've gone through some of the classic nodes, the most used nodes and told them how it works. So it's got a really good way of dealing with all of these different nodes. So here, this is a, uh, a check status node. Uh, we've got here root by category, we've got set fields. So it's understanding how all of these work so it can use these within processes. You can see these are quite long. And again, if you wanna have a look at these or download them so you can create this yourself, I'll put it in the community. So that's uh, kind of pillar number one, two, three, and, and pillar number four are all of these examples. So what I've done here is I've simply taken the JSON from a NATM workflow. So I've gone here and downloaded it, turned that JSON into a text file, and I then uploaded it to this project just to give it an example of how these work. And at the top, I have explained what this does um, and then said, this is the JSON. This is just to give it even more context so that it really knows how everything fits together. And again, I've only used 62% of the uh, possible knowledge. The more that you use, the more precise it's going to be. And if you're super uh, keen to get this working, perhaps you run an agency and you really wanna speed up the production time of these automations, you could create your own version, perhaps using something like Gemini, which has got a massive context window, and you'll be able to fit in many, many more files uh, which is going to give you even more precise JSON than what we're dealing with here. So it's relatively simple. All we're doing is getting Claude to generate that JSON for us and we're giving it a load of context. The hard work has essentially gone into creating those prompts, creating those uh, files, which essentially is telling it how everything works. And we're then just passing it into Claude using 3.7 Sonnet, which is the best one at the moment. But as newer models come out, those new models are going to be better. And again, coding uh, models are going to be even better than anything else. Now, I have tried this with OpenAI and for whatever reason, it does not work as well. Claude is much, much better at this than OpenAI is. OpenAI does have its own version of projects. Uh, they might even be called projects too, I can't remember, but it works much, much better with Claude for whatever reason. And you do have to be on the Claude Pro plan in order to use projects. However, as I said, you could create this yourself uh, simply by using Gemini or whatever you wanted to and passing in all of this as context. So before we wrap it up, let's have a look at another example. I have got another prompt here and I'm gonna paste it in. Now this one is create an automation that will research meeting attendees and send a report to me before the meeting. So let's send that one off. Essentially, before we have a meeting with someone or a bunch of people, we want to know all about them um, so that when we get on a call, we know who they are and we can have a better conversation, connect a little bit sooner, and uh, they always help meetings flow a little bit better and get a better result from the meeting. So again, this is gonna take a couple of seconds. It's gonna give us JSON and we can put that over into NA10. Okay, so it's taken a couple of seconds. We've now got that JSON. We can simply copy it and we can come over to a new automation. Let's paste that in. It's gonna look a little bit ugly. Actually, it's not too bad, but let's uh, tidy it up and uh, let's see what we've got. Okay, that doesn't actually make it much better, but let's, uh, let's have a look at what we got. We've got our notes here. Let's uh, pull these over so we can see what's going on here. And um, basically what we're doing is we are taking our uh, Google Calendar event. And when a new uh, calendar event is created, it looks like we are grabbing all of the attendees. We are filtering out ourselves because we don't need to research ourselves. And then we're going to go through each attendee. And we're going to see uh, if they've got a company email or a personal email. It's then going to research the person or the company, depending on if it's a person or a company. It's then going to send that information back. And when it's gone through all of the attendees, it's going to combine those results 
uh, create an email. It looks like that's what it's doing there. And then send the email report to us. And again, you can see it's not 100% there. It's about 95% of the way there. We need to do a little bit of work here. It looks like these two nodes here um, have not generated correctly. You can see we just need to hook these up and then we've got everything working. So there we go. That is how we can create N810 workflows in just a matter of seconds by giving a prompt to this Claude project that we have created. If you want all of these files so you can create it for yourself, do come over to the community. If you have any questions, this is the place as well to come and you can ask any questions you've got. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. And uh, if you want to see more videos, please do subscribe and like this video if you have enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.